Welcome back to our channel. If you've had a rapture dream or a testimony that you'd like to share, feel free to send your video to my email or telegram. You'll find the details in the description below. In today's video, I'm going to share a rapture dream that I've been given permission to post by our sister in Christ. Let's dive in and explore her profound experience. Hi guys, my name is Ashley. If you're new here, I make videos to help encourage Christian singles in their pursuit of Christ. Today, I wanted to hop on the trend. Uh, if you're on TikTok, which I feel like most of the world is now. If you have a TikTok, you would know that rapture dreams are like trending if you're on Christian talk. So I wanted to kind of continue on with my rapture series. I, I just think it's important to talk about. I think sometimes we shy away from talking about the rapture because no one knows the day or the hour and it hasn't happened yet. So I don't know. I don't know why people don't talk about it more, but now the topic has really opened up and I wanted to share um, my rapture dream experience. I had this dream when I started my job when, back in 2008. So the reason why I remember this is because I was in a really big transition in my life. I had just gotten out of college and I was praying about pursuing a career, or, but my main heart's desire was to be a wife. And I just remember uh, really praying and kind of struggling with which direction to go. And at that time when I had just started my job, I had this guy who was pursuing me pretty hard. <laughs> he would call me at work. He would drive by my work and just stop over to say hi. And younger me was very flattered by these attempts. And I just remember him sending me really sweet messages and he really was a very successful man. He was very attractive and he kind of checked all the boxes physically and just what the world had to offer. And I just remember really struggling like, okay, here's my perfect setup. Like here's the future for me and what I could have. But the main thing that this particular guy was missing was a true relationship with the Lord. He, um, it was basically non-existent. Like he was a good guy, um, but he just didn't have a heart for God. And I just remember thinking to myself, okay, like this guy has everything that I want but he's missing this one thing. And I just remember really struggling with that, like praying and asking God, okay, which way do I go? And I had been fasting and praying about it. And one night I had this dream and I will never forget this dream. As long as I live, it is the most, um, I want to say it's the realest dream that I've ever had. It's the it's the only dream that I absolutely wrote out everything that happened and because I I knew God used this dream to speak directly to me about what I had been praying for. Um so I'm just going to describe to you in detail about the dream and just kind of explain after the things God revealed to me through this dream. So the, the setup of the dream, the very first thing that I see is what looks to be like a university, this beautiful building about four stories high 
and the architecture was um, just kind of like a hundred years ago, I would say, the structure of that. And at the corners of the top of the building were like these gargoyles that had um, like a fountain at the top of their head that water came over and it, it and on both sides at both corners the water just came down the building like waterfalls and in front of the building was this meticulously cut grass in front with a um, just beautiful sidewalk to the entrance and it was just absolutely gorgeous. And then in the grass is where I was at and pretty far off from the building, I would say like maybe a football field's length away uh, is where I was at. And I'll just use this guy's name is Jeff. <laughs> That's not his real name, but we'll call him Jeff. Um, so we were in the grass and we were having a picnic and um it's it's like a beautiful day there's no clouds in the sky and we're just kind of talking and having a, a really good time and then out of nowhere you can like sense a shift like when you know something really bad is about to happen you can kind of sense a shift and all of a sudden your view goes back to this beautiful building and I get a picture of the building was actually a dam like behind it you see all of this water and you see that it's holding back just a huge amount of water and you see the building start to shake and like the gargoyles beginning to crack and and all of a sudden you feel this sense of urgency like you have to get out and so Jeff like picks up all of our stuff and he's like we gotta get out of here and we start running and then as I get up to run away my Bible is on the ground at the picnic and I start running with him and I and I turn and look and see my Bible and I'm like I gotta run back and grab my Bible and he's like you don't have time for that we gotta leave now and so I like grab hold of his hand and we run and then as we're running the scene shifts to a um like a train station and it's a dream right so this made sense we we get to the train station and there's this phone booth and he's like we'll be safe in this phone booth so we jump in the phone booth and he's holding me and in that moment of him holding me, like, it's very, like, an affectionate time. Like, he's embracing me and kissing me and just everything my heart and my soul longs for, like, that safety and that affection was just wrapped up and almost like, oh, this is so nice. Like, this is everything that I wanted. And then it, like, flashes and you know that in that moment the the terrible thing that you're expecting happened and so then it's like everything goes black and you then wake up and I'm not actually awake but you wake up in the dream <laughs> it's kind of weird but I wake up and in the scene is the phone booth that we're in is now laid down so now we're laying down in the phone booth still and you get this imagery of the place that we ran from the building that we ran from and the beautiful cut grass is actually completely safe like it was not touched by the disaster that had happened it was actually the only safe place and everything else had reached complete destruction and we were caught and what was the the judgment of the lord which was the removal of god's grace on the world and you don't really realize how much you take for granted the grace of god until there is no grace left and so the picture is we were stuck in this phone booth and you know you can see out of a phone booth and because we were at the train station we 
we see all these trains lined up I mean miles and miles long and in the train cars I don't know if you've watched any of the movies where the Jews go into like these camps there are train cars like that just full of families and it, beside the train cars are um, is just like this this picture of the judgment of of God like but where people are kind of I guess receiving what it's like to live on earth without God's presence and there's this ramp and the there's demons everywhere and the demons have basically control of all the humans and these demons pull people out of the train cars and it's always families that he's that they're pulling out of the train cars and you see that the demons allow for one family member to be a runner and they allow another family member to be a chaser and what it is is they are they're being told that they have to chase this family member up this ramp and when they fall off the ramp they they enter into the eternal abyss of of hell and it's just terrible it's um it's so horrific and um but they're told if you refuse to chase this family member off then the demons will kill you and the demons are behind the runner and the chaser and kind of mocking them as they have to run their family member off the ramp and you're watching this whole thing unfold and you see that every time a family member has to run their their significant other or their child off the ramp the demons just laugh and rejoice at the the pain and the suffering this is bringing to the family and every every time a family member um chases the other family member off the ramp uh the demons say well you can live another round and obviously like this this is a really just i I don't know how to describe it other than absolutely heartbreaking. Like as we're watching this and we're in the phone booth, our hearts are just completely broken. Like I just remember like sobbing, being like, where is God? Like, where is the hope? Where is the victory? Where is someone coming in to stop this? But you realize like God isn't coming. This is judgment. This is... This is the consequences of the choices that these people have made to deny Christ. And as we're there, just seeing that the chasers get the opportunity to live because they're, they're chasing people off the ramp. But you could just see in their eyes, they don't want to live anymore. They don't want to see another of their family members be thrown into the abyss. And so they just stop chasing like they've collapsed and they just they can't live with themselves and so they just get killed by the demons and the demons rejoice and and as we're watching this like we know that <laughs> this phone booth that we went to for safety is now like our coffin because we're trapped in it and we know that we're going to be in line for this judgment and we're talking in the phone booth deciding who's going to be a runner and who's going to be a chaser. And we both know that either way we're going to die a horrific death. And I, in that moment, just look over to that field where we thought the judgment was coming. And how it's just so beautiful and so safe. And I just remember feeling like I would do anything to go back. I would do anything to go back to where it was safe because I can't handle this. I can't handle seeing there's no grace on the earth. There's no hope. There's only rejoicing over human suffering. And 
I wake up and I just, I'm just so thankful that God gave me that vision. He gave me that dream. And instantly I knew that this relationship was not one that I needed to pursue. Instantly I knew that a man, even though he fit everything that the world had to offer, if he was not sold out for Christ, that was not a man that I was going to attach myself to. And one of the things that I feel like people don't talk a lot about on Rapture Dreams is when the church leaves, there is going to be no more like grace and light in the world. It is going to be such a horrific scene of hopelessness and despair and um, just where you felt the grace of the Lord, it's not going to be there anymore. And God gave me a real picture of that. And he gave me a picture of just what it's like to trust in man. And today in, in church, they actually talked about uh, trusting in man. And I wanted to share a piece of scripture. It's Jeremiah 17 verses 5 through 8. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness and in an inhibited salt land. Blessed is a man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. He is like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stem and does not fear when heat comes for its leaves remain green. And it is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. <laughs> and I just think that that is such a good picture for us as believers right now. Um, if you are stuck in relying on yourself right now, you will be severely disappointed when Jesus comes back. Because he is coming back for people who hold on to the word, who hold on to surrender to Christ, who hold on to following the word rather than following what the world has to say. The next verse in verse 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? And I just feel like, once again, that was my dream. My heart was deceitful. My heart wanted what it desired was that love and affection from a man. And in, in the end, that caused me to just lay my Bible down. And I, I, I guess I want to challenge you is there something in your life right now that's causing you to lay your bible down is there a sin is there someone in your life is there even your job what you're pursuing is there something in your life that's causing you to lay your bible down if you're watching this i know that god has brought you to my video to say wake up you do not know the hour or the time that God will return. And he is coming back for people who have kept the oil in their lamps. They have kept relationship with the Lord. They have not gone with the world and everything that the world has to offer. They have forsaken the world. And they've said, even though everything looks dangerous, like in my dream where it looked like everything was terribly going to happen right where the presence of the Lord was, but that was a lie. I was deceived in the dream by fear. And I feel like so many Christians are running away from God because of fear, or they're running away from God because following Him has gotten too challenging, too difficult. And if that's you, I want to encourage you that you are not alone in your pursuit of Christ. You're not you're not so far gone that God cannot redeem you and take you back. God is faithful and he can redeem the years that maybe you've spent pursuing other things or 
maybe you feel like you've just become lukewarm or dry in your faith and God is saying, repent, turn to me, run to me and I will heal you. I will set your heart ablaze again. And I just wanted to share my testimony of just really the rapture dream. I know that God gave me that for a reason. I know that the time of his coming, we don't know, but we can spread the hope and the truth that he is coming back. We may not know the day or the hour, but the Bible says to be ready, to have the oil in our lamps and to have that relationship, to remain prayerful and watchful and to understand that if we have things that separate us from him, they're not worth holding on to. They're not worth the the separation that it could cause from a savior that laid down his life for us on the cross so that we could be free from sin, so that we could be free from the enemy's lies and his deceit. And in the end, that's how the, that's how the enemy is going to get so many Christians is through deceit. And once again, going back to the dream, I was deceived because I left the word of the Lord. And I think it's so, so, so important in these last days and the days where so many people are having rapture dreams, stay in the word. Stay in the word of the Lord and don't allow what other people are saying to sway you from what his word says. And so I just want to thank you for watching this video. I encourage you just to pray. I encourage you to find a godly community that can encourage you and walk this road right beside you. And I just ask that you would, you know, pray that God makes you ready. Pray that God gives you the strength to walk this road because it's not easy, but it's worth it in the end. And God can help you through the struggles. He can help you through the hard things that you're going through. And he can help you through today. I encourage you to seek him, to know that he is with you, to know that he is near to you, and that he is coming back one day. And he's coming back for a bride that has kept their oil in their lamps, who has kept a passionate heart to serve. And I just pray that you would be found to be one of those. So I just pray that your day is blessed. And thank you for watching. Bye.